If you mention seatbelts among a group of Model A'ers, you're bound to receive a lot of opinions, get plenty of advice, and hear a lot of stories. Four Model A's did not originally come with seatbelts and lack many of the other safety features that we're accustomed to in modern automobiles today. Seatbelts that you can purchase from suppliers also don't often come with instructions for installation, probably due to liability reasons and to the fact that Model A's were not designed with seatbelts in mind in the first place. Seatbelts in a Model A are also not without controversy, with some people believing it's just safer to not have them in the first place due to concerns over the body separating from the frame during a collision. Seatbelts in a Model A may truly be nothing more than a feel-good sensation, but at the end of the day, if a door ever pops open on us during a turn, or if we're ever in a small fender bender, we want to have something that we hope will keep us inside of the car. Driving a classic car comes with risk, and you need to accept that risk if you choose to get behind the wheel of one. We encourage all of you to do your own research about seatbelts and decide for yourself on whether or not it's best for you to include them in your car or not. So today, we're going to install lap seatbelts in the Lady in Red, Georgia's 1930 Ford Model A. Now, it's important to note that we aren't professionals, and what we're doing today are just modifications that we're choosing to make for only our car. We're simply documenting what we decided to do, but you should exercise your own judgment about how best to install your own seatbelts if you decide to do so. The MAFCA webpage has a section entitled The Case for Seatbelts, with some articles that show various ways that seatbelts have been installed in different models of the Model A over the years. I'll put a link to that page in the description of the video below if you'd like to read through it. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get to the barn and let's get to work. When George acquired this Model A, one of the first things he noticed about it was that it didn't have any seatbelts. And because we're planning to do events and tours with it, it was important that we put some in. He purchased four sets of adjustable seatbelts from Snyder's, and today we're going to install them. To give us a little more room to work, we removed the front and rear seats from the car. Each front seat in our car is attached to the floor by seat legs with pins and cotter pins. If you've spent any time working on a Model A, then you're intimately familiar with the pure joy of attaching and removing cotter pins. The cotter pins underneath the seats are a bit hard to get at, but with a little time, effort, and most importantly, patience, they can be removed. Once the pins were out, we removed both the driver and passenger side seats. Our Tudor has a wooden floor and a layer of heat insulation covered up by a rubber mat. Underneath the rubber mat and insulation lies a four inch steel channel that spans across the body just behind the front seats. We plan to anchor our front seat belts through this body cross channel. We began by drilling three pilot holes through the steel channel. We drilled the two outer pilot holes about two inches in from the body blocks. And then we found center using a tape measure and drilled a pilot hole there. There they are. Here, here, and there. I think we're close enough. Once our pilot holes were set, we used a half inch drill bit to cut out the bolt holes from above to the correct size. All right, so we've got a half inch drill bit. These are, these are the bolts or the belts that came from Snyder's. Now that's 
should. It does. It fits right in there like it's made for it. Now we'll drill it. Where's the center one go? Right there. Yep. Next, we drilled out the holes to half an inch in both our insulation and in our rubber floor mat, following the path that we'd already drilled below them before. From there, we inserted the bolts with the seat belts attached into our half inch holes. Push that down in there, and then this side. Go through there. Now we gotta get the other seat belt. I think this has got to be like that. Let the seat set. I think the seat sits here and here. With the seat belt set inside the car, we raised the lift to secure them to the steel channel underneath the car. The seat belts we purchased included mounting hardware, but the big washers that came with it needed to be ground down a bit in order for them to fit into the channel securely. Using a grinder, George began to modify the large washers to fit inside the steel cross channel. The two washers that secure the belts to the outside facing sides of the car were ground down on three sides. To make sure that they fit into the channel correctly, we had to grind them down a bit and then check them with the channel back and forth a few times until we were satisfied with their fit. The washer in the center needs to only be ground on two sides, but again, should be checked in the channel for proper fit before it's bolted down. Once we were happy with how our washers fit, we secured all three of them inside the steel cross channel with the big washer, an extra heavy duty washer underneath it, a split washer, and then the nut. and we added an extra heavy duty washer and our split washer and the nut. The kana. The kana. It's like it's custom made. It's because it is. Split. And now I cannot. George got inside the car holding the bolt with a wrench while well, I used a ratchet and a three quarter inch socket to tighten down the three nuts below the car.
With the final nut tightened, the front seat belts were done. With the front seat belts wrapped up, we moved on to the back seat belts. A friend of ours in our local club fixed us up with an aluminum plate, cut to length to fit underneath the back end of the car to act as an anchor point for us to bolt our seatbelts to. This piece of aluminum is a quarter of an inch thick and he's already rounded the edges of the plate to follow the body of the car. Our plan is to bolt this as far back underneath the body as we can, which should line us up nicely inside of the car and behind the seats. But to fit the aluminum plate up under the car, we needed to first remove a rear tire. With the tire removed, we slid the aluminum plate up and into place at the back end of the body. Once we determined where we thought the middle of the body was located, we marked the front edge of the aluminum, thus dividing the aluminum plate into two sides at center. On the two outside ends, we determined where the right and left body seams were located, and we marked those as the outer edge of the area where we would plan to put our seatbelt bolts. see that seam here and here and be just inside of that. There's that that's that brake light that goes up to this and it goes in through a hole. That's what we got to go over. With our two seat belt sections identified, George slid the aluminum plate away and drilled four holes up through the floor in approximately the spots that he wanted our seat belts I bolted. I want to be I'm assuming this is center. Pretty close anyway. Once George had drilled out the four half-inch seatbelt bolt holes, I got up into the car to mark the locations of those four holes on the aluminum plate. From inside of the car, I was able to find the holes and use a black Sharpie marker to mark where the four holes in the aluminum plate should be drilled out. Okay, I found you. You see it? Yep. This is, half inch is pretty precise on that. Using a half inch drill bit, George drilled out the four seat belt bolt holes. Once the aluminum plate was ready, I climbed back up into the car to put the seat belts, the seat belt bolts, and the big washers into each hole. And from below the car, George secured the bolts to the body and the aluminum plate using the same heavy duty washers, split washers, and nuts that we used on the front seat belts. Using a ratchet and the same three quarter inch socket as before, George tightened down the nuts underneath the car while I held the top of the bolts with an adjustable wrench inside the car. There it is. Okay. I think we got it all. With our installation complete, it was time to put the lady in red back together again.
With only a few more steps to go, it was time to reinstall our front and back seats. Lifting the back seat up and into the car, we carefully positioned and placed the back seat back onto its brackets. Before setting it down and pressing it into place, we carefully pulled the back seat belts up between the rear cushion and the backrest and laid them across the seat so they'd be ready for use. Next, we reinstalled the two front seats and attached them to the brackets on the floor with their pins and new cotter pins. With the seat belts installed in the Model A, we're ready to take the Lady in Red out on the road for tours and local events. If you guys are enjoying our videos or you found them helpful to you in some way, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Join us next time as we get back to work on our 1930 Ford Model A restoration and continue to make that restoration a reality on the next episode of Epic Restorations.